Hello friends, it is time for our next episode of Year of Rex, the series I've been doing this year to try and get my best reading year ever, which has really not been happening, but we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> You don't want to oh, oh, are you all right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, oh, darling. So and in this episode, my boyfriend Tom is going to be picking what I read. I'm very nervous. I have quite a strong inkling on what he's. Oh my god! Did you hear that? Dina is not happy that I'm filming and not playing with her. Um. <laughs> Yeah, Tom is going to be picking what I read. I have a strong inkling what he's going to be picking, including two books that he loved that are quite long. <laughs> so I'm a bit nervous for that. But surely the person who knows me best in the world, other than Dida, <laughs> surely should be able to give me some books that I enjoy. So I'm going to welcome him in and we're going to see what books he's chosen for me to read. Should we get to it? I feel sick to my stomach. <laughs> They've already seen her. Yeah, well, she's back here. She was meowing at me when I was filming the intro. She went, looked up at me and went, meow. Okay, guys. She's I've got my librarian in chief. <laughs> and she's made some picks. Have you? Have yep. You for me? Yep. Yeah. I would just say yeah. that whilst I've only read a few books. Yeah, Tom has So only, I can't yeah. guarantee they're going to be five stars. But what I can guarantee is that two of my top my favourite books yeah. are in what list? They are on the top 10 of the New York Times best books of the 21st century. Well, what can was. I say? So, <laughs> you know, I just I, I shoot, I score. <laughs> so I've got two ones that some of you would already know what I'm going to be given. Yes, so the patrons will know because there is, there is favourite books. I knew you were going to pick these. I don't know what your third is, but yeah. Pachinko. So my first choice is Pachinko. Yeah. Megan actually bought me this, but why did you I buy did. me this book? I just thought you'd like it from what I heard about it. I just had a. I, I actually tried to make you get it when you. What are you going to recommend me for the second book? <laughs> when we went book shopping, when you decided you wanted a book, I picked this out for you, and you said no. No. And no. then, and then, a, you know, a couple months later, when it was like birthday, Christmas, whatever, I just got it for you because I was so sure you'd like it. So, if I remember rightly, it follows multiple generations yeah. of a family, of a family. through Korea to Japan throughout the 20th century mm -hmm. and it's, it's it's a beautiful book it's a, I'd describe it as being cruel cruel okay it's quite a cruel story um but uh like really distinctively quite a human okay human story whilst mm. that and being really well written so you know that's that'll be fine that's gonna be an easy five stars anyway what? okay i want to go home like i can't take the pressure of it but don't you think any job interview my second pick, yeah. my second pick, I don't actually have the physical We can't book. find it. We can't find it, but this is like <laughs> one in the series. I think that's number three. That's the final, isn't it? I don't know. I'm I think remember. that's the final book. But it's Wolf Hall. Maybe not. Wolf Hall. It's it's a wolf oh my God, I can't believe you're making me Wolf Hall. That's, the first, that's <laughs> the first one I'm recommending. So that's the first book I read when you, mm, since like... since I was a kid or something. Well, I've read lots of non-fiction non uh, non books mm -hmm. yeah non-fiction books but i'm not the best reader so i prefer to listen to audiobooks yeah but, fiction, but as a fiction you mostly book, read physically i think i didn't find this too difficult to read people say it's really difficult because there's so many difficult writing style i've heard about Wolf yeah War. i think and it, it's like, so bloody long <laughs> it kind of switches between dialogue to prose would you call it prose i don't yes, know what you call yes. it one yeah so like i'm just opened up to a random page right and you're going to see where they're just, there are quotation marks, but it, it doesn't always tell you who's speaking. So you have to kind of infer mm. that there's this said kind of back and forth. And I'm not the best reader in the world, so I would have to reread these pages over and over again. And you'd have names of people you'd forget because it's set of a kind of different lineages. Oh, Miko. Now we've got a cat meeting because Miko wants to hear about what I'm saying. What's wrong? Hi. You okay? But <laughs> it's a fantastic series. Again, interesting women through history. Mm -hmm. I found mm -hmm. women writing about a distinctly male experience, but often women being the power players within that setting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Quite a unique perspective. Is Anne Boleyn in the first one? I think she might be in the second one, second, perhaps. Okay. Uh. But she's she's quite like a, a captivating character. I think she's in the first one, maybe. Okay, okay, yeah. I like a bit of Anne Boleyn. But yeah, it's, so. it's, it's a great... It's a seriously good book. I'm actually excited. I'm just scared of how long it is. Bear in mind, how long did it take you to read each of these books that I've got to read in like a week that you're giving me? I don't know. It's a long time. Like a month. Ago. Probably read them in a month. Yeah, maybe. I got to read, read three of them in a week. Okay, okay. I knew he was going to pick those two. 
I knew you were going to pick those two. I have no... I could not guess what you're picking as your third. So, <laughs> i got no real interest in recommending a non-fiction book. Oh, okay. Really? No. There's been some non-fiction you've enjoyed. I didn't yeah. even think about it. You can. Anyways, carry on. But I just don't think it'd be very interesting. Okay. So I'm going to recommend my favourite book from when I was a kid. Not fucking, like, Skullduggery Pleasant or some shit. Oh, that was what was going to happen. <laughs> Why is that shit? I really liked it. I don't know. Is that crap? I didn't. I think I only read like a few of them. Is that rubbish? No, I'll read it. Well, hang on. We'll slow down. We'll slow down. Because I don't want to get fucking flamed here. I mean, is this some, no, is this some sort what? of... Is it like to be just being cringe now? I don't no, know. No, I don't think so. I just... I didn't ever see myself reading one of them. Well, you read all these... like What they call I them? Do, middle grade? I do read some middle grade, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, there you Okay, go so I've got to enough. read... The first... Do you have one in mind? Yeah, the first one. The I first school I don't, I don't remember. I don't really remember anything about it. All I remember was, is <laughs> that hell. all the kids in my class, we were big on it. We liked it. I don't know whether I was in primary school or whatever. I don't know what grade I would have been in. But there was like a cool skeleton detective. <laughs> okay, it's And detective. he had flame hands. It was cool. What's the first just skull duggery pleasant? I feel like this was one. like Twilight for boys. Okay, interesting. But I might be entirely wrong. I'm not quite sure. Okay, about first that. skull duggery. I didn't do pleasant. a lot of reading as a kid, so it was that or Beast Quest. Beast Quest. <laughs> and I think that was even. I didn't pick that one because that was even lower tier. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's a detective. That's fun. Well, there you go then. Do you want to? Like, should I give you a book to read? No. <laughs> I got things to be doing. I got cats. So we got a new cat. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Are you right. happy? Well, I'll give you two long ones and one short one. Well, I, I think two guaranteed five stars because okay. we need to the find universe says the five stars. I think Pachinko is the one you're gonna like the best. So I'll we'll start, start with that one first. Uh, okay, I'll start with Pachinko. Um, but it's it's sad. Um, okay. but it's it's pretty at points. Um, okay. I think it describes senses really well. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh, uh, just uh, and people watching will know if they've read it, but like just intensely infuriating characters as well, but for reasons that are not their own, you know. Mm, okay. Just baby. infuriating, and Wolf Hall is Wolf Hall. Okay, and Scar Duggery Pleasant. All right, let's start reading, shall we? <laughs> Hello, friends. It is so dark and cold and windy outside and my tripod's in the car. So you're resting <laughs> on my backpack on the side of the sofa. But I wanted to quickly check in with you because I'm only about 130 pages into Pachinko, but I wanted to give you kind of like an initial impressions before I get into the rest of the book. Cause it kind of feels like the first act of the book is kind of coming to fruition now but i'll basically tell you what you know on the synopsis so we start off in korea in 1911 and we meet sanja who's a daughter of a fisherman her mum runs this kind of lodger house and she discovers she's pregnant her lover is married she refuses to kind of be you know a woman that he pays for and kind of keeps in another home and like a second family and she ends up marrying a young minister who's been staying at the lodge house and they've been looking after and that's kind of the first 100 pages and I'm really enjoying this book. I'm really enjoying this book. It, I love it. It just feels so clever and nuanced and tender but cruel at the same time. I'm really loving the writing style. You know, it's really fun talking to Tom about this because it's, I wish he read more. It's so fun hearing what he says about books because I think he actually is quite an intelligent reader who <laughs> even though he barely reads fiction um because he was talking about how sensorial it is and it really is you feel like you can touch and smell and taste and see everything you know it feels very very vivid I'm enjoying the historical setting and a setting I haven't read from a lot before and there's just something about even from the first 20 pages like I you know when you just come across a writing style that you really really enjoy this is definitely that for me I know this spans across a, a long period of time and it hasn't really yet so I'm a bit nervous about time jumps and how I feel about that like I know we follow generations and you know 140 pages in we're kind of still with that one storyline the baby hasn't been born yet so it's been very much setting everything up but um I don't know there's just something about this that feels special when you encounter a book that has Here's the thing, actually. Maybe this is what's been shooting me in the foot. I think I love long books that have time to really get into the depth of something and really, I don't know, examine examine a topic in such detail and root through the weeds. I always say 
I love a book that feels like it's a tree with a lot of branches. You have, you have the you have the main trunk of the tree and then you have branches and you have branches coming from those branches and I love when everything feels connected but little offshoots and stuff. Whereas I hate when a book just feels like the trunk of a tree. It's a straight line. You know, I hate that. I hate when a book doesn't have any little Sorry, I don't know if I'm been in focus. Doesn't have any little like offshoots to it. And this really feels like that. And I feel like with short books, it's harder to do that. With long chunker books, it's easier. And I end up reading short books because they're easy to read. <laughs> it's actually the diametrical opposite. Oh my God. Whereas this maybe feels like more something I, I would love. So yeah, that's just my initial impression before we kind of, we were only just getting really past the synopsis. So I want to check in with you now and I'm going to try and get a quite a bit more read today. And yeah, I'm just really excited to see, to see where the book goes, where the storyline goes, how far, you know, how, how the kind of time skip is handled. And um, yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it. So I'm going to try and read more today whilst it's windy and rainy and cold. But uh, I'll check in with you on a little bit the way through. But it's really fun reading a book that, like, I know this is Tom's favourite book. I mean, I picked it out for him. Like, I, you know, I'm still the tastemaker in this relationship when it comes to books. But um, it's really fun reading, reading, you know, the person you love's favourite book. It's, well, I don't know if he feels that way. Because <laughs> I, you know, I tried to make him read Babble and he didn't like it. He didn't like the fantasy aspect. So we've learned Tom is not a fantasy guy. He likes realism. <laughs> he didn't like me. He thought the fantasy. He was like, fantasy stuff is just stupid. <laughs> so um, we've got just good realistic stuff. But yes, I'm really enjoying it. So I'll check in with you when I'm a little bit of the ways through it. Hello, friends. I am now about 330 pages into Pachinko. So I thought I'd check in again. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Listen. <laughs> I love it. Tom all the credit for this because I did pick this out for him so really it's like a recommendation to myself through osmosis no I'm loving it we're, we're quite a lot further in the future so the book starts in 1911 I believe and at the point I'm at we are now in the early 1960s so we've tried bloody hell that just makes you realize how much older certain characters are than when you first met them even though like because the way that time's moving, you're not necessarily aging them, some of them up in your mind. Anyways, I'm love, love, loving this book. I am astounded by the writing. I think the writing is so beautiful. You know, this isn't something I know a ton about in history in terms of like Koreans treatment in Japan and the kind of relationship between the countries and Koreans moving to Japan, but being treated with such prejudice. So yeah, it's not something I know a ton about, but it's teaching you so much, but without like, um, I think I read in a Goodreads review the other day, someone talking about how it doesn't feel like history is being spoon fed to you. It feels like you're learning it through drips and drabs and, and learning it through really the impact on the characters themselves. And I, I'm just loving it. I don't really know what else to say. I don't know if it's quite a five star yet, but I'm guessing that in this kind of last part, it hasn't made me cry yet. And I see people talking about how it makes them cry. So I feel like there's gonna be some pretty heartbreaking <laughs> stories to come, but I'm finding it just like, it, it's quite intimidating, right? Right. You see it in the top 10 list of New York Times best books of the 21st century and you see how long it is and I feel like people could be intimidated by it but it's very accessible. It's a very, um, I don't want to say easy read because we're reading about things that are very horrible <laughs> often and cruel but in terms of just the writing it takes you, it holds your hand through it all you know. It's a very easy read to get through. I feel like also I've been reading so many rubbish books lately that like I don't know how to talk to you guys about a book I love. <laughs> I'm like, doo, 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 doo. <laughs> it's good. Just seeing these characters, I think I really love a generational story, you know? Like seeing Sunja, so, so Sunja's, we, well, we first we meet her parents, I believe. What do we start off with? So yeah, we start off with Sunja's parents meeting and then we see her being born and her life and then her getting pregnant with her first son. And then now we're kind of following, so we're still following her, but we're following her sons as well as they're kind of young adults, young men. And just, I have loved seeing this family's story and the and the path that they've taken and the road that they've walked down together. I'm, I am loving it. I'm loving it. I'm probably gonna finish it today. So I might see you later with my rating, but it's just so rich with, with feeling and with history and with meaning, but also not not a hard book to get through, you know? So I'm already like recommending this to you guys. I, I love 
say it. Could Tom, I don't want to speak too soon, but could he be the most successful Year of Rex episode yet? Who knows? Because I think this is going to be really highly rated. I am, um, yeah, I'm loving, loving reading it. So I'll check with you a little bit later. I'm probably going to go out for a little walk in a bit and listen to the audiobook whilst I am on the walk. So I'll see you later once I've finished it. But um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. don't think I have the words to adequately describe this book to you. I'm giving it five stars. It is an absolute masterpiece. It's beyond. It's everything. <laughs> it's, it's, guys, this book is so incredible. The way that it spans such a long period of time, but doesn't feel jarring between kind of time shifts and, and you know, the way that, sorry, this pillows are annoying me. Um, the way that culture shifts across those times. It doesn't feel like you jump from time to time, but then you look back and you see how far you've come and it's absolutely beautiful. This made me cry. In this last part, mm, there's a moment, I was actually listening to a book and I was washing my hands at the sink and it made me stop. Because it was just one line. It's one line, if you've read the book, <laughs> it's one line at the end of a chapter with absolutely heart, shat heart shattering, earth breaking, heart breaking, earth shattering uh, news. And I was washing my hands and I just did that and I started crying. <laughs> it's just. And I really scratched my head and I wonder, where's God when you need him? It's heartbreaking. This factory book does that a lot where it will drop an emotional moment on you at the end of a chapter and then switch to a completely different storyline with different characters, a different part of the story. So you have no resolution on what's happened with those characters. I mean, maybe you do like a chapter or two later, but you're just kind of left like in the lurch. There's no, no follow up. The horrible thing happens and then you're just left and you don't see how the characters deal with that in the immediate aftermath, which is a very interesting choice. I think it's beautiful. I think the writing style is very interesting. I saw Roxanne Gay's review talking about how the writing is quite, has a steeliness to it. And I really like that description of it. It, yeah, I don't know. I really, really loved it. And Sunja is the heart of this story. I love Sunja. I love her. I love her. She's, you know, the person we really start this story with. And I just love following her throughout the ages. And I, if I had to say one bad thing about it, we follow a lot on one of her grandson's storylines um, in the last part. And I didn't love that as much. However, <laughs> it's still a fire star. I think I can completely understand why this has become a modern classic so quickly. I just absolutely adored it. I cannot recommend this to you guys enough. Like I said, I know it's intimidating, but once you get into it, it's just kind of intimidating because it's long in, in the end. Like once you get into it, it's very easy to read. And it's made me want to learn more about this time in history. It's made me want to, I like, I want to go to Korea or Japan having experienced this and seeing, I don't know, the way that the, their culture played out in this or I don't know. I just thought it was so fascinating. So, so fascinating. So we're off to win with Tom's video. You know what's the most exciting thing about winning? It's when you win. I love that feeling. Oh, can we talk about how the fact that I've got a five star book? Also, I I'm like tentative about saying this because this vlog's going out after another vlog, but I'm finishing this first. So I'm reading this before I read any of the books for my spooky prompts reading vlog. So who knows, I could find a five star in that. If I did, I don't know about it right now because I haven't read those books yet. So this is my first five star in ages. And I'm just so happy to love reading. Isn't reading beautiful? Isn't how we put all these fucking words onto pages and then we all consume it in our brains and isn't it just wonderful and magical and the parts of the world we get to see but also create ourselves because they're being you know it's not like watching a film or a tv show or a documentary like you are given you're handed the story over with such care anyways i fucking love books and reading i do just quickly i got a parcel from a publisher. I think it's something I requested, but I don't remember what I requested, so I thought we'd open it together. Oh. 
Oh my goodness. It's Fair Play by Louise Hegarty. A wild and invented debut from an astonishing voice, new voice from Ireland. I don't read a lot of Irish authors. And if you guys don't know, I'm predominantly Irish. Both my parents are kind of half Irish. So I'm kind of half Irish. My nan came over from Ireland when she was very young and experienced a lot of persecution and the family that I know best in my life is her family her side of the family and so yeah anyways that's so that's so interesting and i've been some of my family live in ireland on that side of the family anyways abigail and her brother benjamin have always been close to celebrate his birthday abigail hires a grand old house and gathers their friends together for a murder mystery party as the night goes on they drink too much and play games relationships are forged consolidate consolidated or frayed someone kisses blah, blah, blah. in the morning everyone wakes up except benjamin an imminent detective arrives determined to find Benjamin's killer. The house now has a butler, a gardener, and a housekeeper. This is a locked room mystery and everyone is a suspect. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So it's basically a murder mystery, locked room murder mystery. I said, yep, I'll be taking that. Thank you very much. I'm so excited. They also sent me a pack of playing cards, themed playing cards, which is quite... Look, they've got like the cover on the back. I am, I don't know a lot of card games, but Tom's family do. So maybe I'll take this around there. I really love, that's such like a nice little graphic to have on the back of a card playing. Anyways, I think I'm going to, I actually don't know what I'm going to read next. I don't know if I'm going to tackle Wolf Hall or if I'm going to read Skullduggery Pleasant as like a break in between. I think it depends. I'm going to go film the other vlog. <laughs> and so I think it depends what I'm in the mood for once I finish that vlog. So we shall see. But I will, yeah, I'll check in with you in a bit. Um, some time will pass and then I'll be back. <laughs> you love me I'm your favorite person oh my goodness hello friends how are we doing we need to discuss Wolf Hall because I am about 150 yeah 150 pages in okay let's set the scene as you guys have seen I went to Oxford to visit my brother who is studying there it was so cool I've never been to Oxford actually so it was great seeing like all the kind of famous landmarks so that was really really fun and then also Tom and I went to a spa together which was my birthday gift for him because it's just been his birthday and on the car ride to Oxford around Oxford in the spa <laughs> during the spa day and on the drive home Tom and I listened to the audiobook together so that first 150 pages we've listened to it at like 1.2 times speed because <laughs> that's the only speed I feel comfortable doing like driving driving I feel like you should listen to an audiobook at like one speed <laughs> And uh, yeah, we listened to it, like we each, we shared an earphone each in the spa when we were like on beds and stuff listening to it. And so that has got us like five hours of listening probably. This book has got us 150 pages in. So I've read this quite slowly, this first 150 pages. I'm really enjoying it. I'm loving it. <laughs> in fact, I wasn't expecting that at all. I'm really enjoying it. I feel kind of tentative saying that because, sorry, I just got like stroke Dita for a sec. I love her so I feel kind of tentative saying that because I know some of my friends haven't enjoyed this, but I really am. So you're following a guy called Thomas Cromwell, who, how much do I want to say? He's kind of like a very important figure in the Tudor royal court in history. And this is basically like a retelling of history. It's, you know, very well researched. You've got so many characters who are just like minor characters in this fucking overarching scheme. And we're only really at the beginning. I'm 
just finding it fascinating. Now, there's two reasons I can understand people don't, well, three in fact. One, I think if you're not English, and I spoke about this recently, I was like, oh, she has no Japanese, and like most of you do, but I think it helps, and I think it's more interesting to read this if you've like studied Tudors growing up, and like you're interested in Tudor history, and you know like the nuances, and like the, the references, and the culture, and like, if you have a broader picture, to fill out what's happening. Because I don't think stuff is described a lot. So if you can imagine the buildings and the clothes and the, you know, food people are eating and all that shit, I think that helps. Number two, there's there's this writing choice where he, he was referred to as he. Thomas Cromwell was referred to as he a lot. So he did this, he did that. He's very rarely referred to as Thomas Cromwell. Really only, I've got Dida hair on my face. Hopefully you can't see it. <laughs> um, only really when someone's talking to him. So that's a very interesting choice where like you can't, I think if I was reading it physically, I think he'd sometimes struggle when he's in a conversation with another guy to tell who's talking. But the audiobook is incredible. The audiobook is so good. I think my recommendation, my top recommendation already, if you're gonna read this, listen to the audiobook. I think the narrator does a wonderful job and he does really good voices. <laughs> so you can delineate who's speaking and also the context. Like this is historical, people are speaking, probably not completely accurate to how they would have done, but you know, in slightly more, oh, sorry, discourse going off. Um, you know, in slightly more difficult to understand <laughs> ways and thus, having someone speak and understanding the meaning behind things, I think is really, really helpful. And what was my number three? Oh, it jumps around in time a lot. It's, it's, it can, it, sometimes it can be confusing. Like within chapters, it will jump forward and back in time, forward and back in time, telling the past and telling the future, then reference, do you know what I mean? It will jump around in time a lot. So that I can understand why people wouldn't like it. I'm really enjoying it, guys. I'm finding the writing so interesting. I'm finding the characters so interesting. Interesting. And it was so fun to read this first 150 pages with Tom because we'd talk about things that were happening or he'd say, oh yeah, I really remember that moment vividly or this moment, this conversation is really a turning point for him and like marks what happens to him in the rest of the books and thus you think about stuff differently. I don't know, I just had someone, I wish he read more. <laughs> Maybe you'll read more. We're thinking when we move out that audiobooks will be a big thing for us because we already like, when we lived in Wales, we listened to the Wayward Children book, some of them the first one in particular, on audio in the car. We quite like listening to audiobooks on long car ride journeys. We've done that a few times before as well. We did one around Christmas time when we had a drive around Christmas with listen to The Christmas Guest by Peter Swanson, which was shit. <laughs> but we quite like listening to audiobooks together. So maybe when we live together, that would be a bigger part of our life because it was just so fun reading this with him. It was so fun. I'm gonna veer off now and read it by myself. But, you know, this first one pages was read really so I might continue to read it kind of slowly as well, slower than my usual pace, which is kind of crazy to say about this long ass book. But I do want to take my time with it and not rush it because I've really enjoyed the understanding that I've gained from this. And just, I mean, I mentioned like Tom saying, oh, this conversation really changes things for him. And there's a conversation that Thomas Cromwell has with Mary Boleyn that I found very interesting. As a stan of Anne Boleyn, this is the book does not love her yet. <laughs> she is a fantastic talent. These people should shut the fuck up. Back the fuck off and let this woman just shine her light because she is Love that you fantastic. And also, I'm dealing with that. You know, it's not the romanticized version of Amblin, it's maybe a bit more of a realistic scheming version of Amblin. Guys, I'm just really enjoying it. I don't know what you're going to say. I'm, I am tentative because I know so many people have not enjoyed it. But I think when I think back to it, I feel like it's more Americans who haven't enjoyed it. Maybe you just don't get the vibe. <laughs> you know, no, like I said, I think having studied it, helps a lot, doesn't it, Deeds? Oh, she's back to sleep. Okay, I told her not to get up. She's not allowed. She has to stay with me all the time. So yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm gonna speed up a little bit now. <laughs> I'll probably check in with you maybe when I'm like 350 pages in, because this is 650 pages, guys. But I feel like I already know I'm gonna continue the series at some point. You know, this is one of the oldest books on my TBR and I'm just loving it. I'm finding it fascinating. I always love court books, like royal court, even fantasy, I love royal court books. So yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it. So I'll check in with you when I've read some more, but I'm gonna try and read a little bit more tonight. I've just loved reading it with Tom. We were literally like sitting in the spa <laughs> on heated lounges, like each of the era and like he <laughs> listening to it. Um, he tried to, we actually listened to it in the sauna a bit as well. <laughs> Anyways, I'll see you when I've read some more, but I'm kind of shook at how much I'm enjoying it. Hello cuties, I am just at the start of part five of Wolf Hall, so I'm on page 420. 
I'm still really enjoying it. I'm still really enjoying it, guys. This is so interesting. I'm loving the writing style. It's making me laugh out loud sometimes, which is hard to do. I don't often laugh at books. I often think when books are trying to be funny, it's cringe. <laughs> but this has got a very wry sense of humour. Like, Thomas Cromwell, the character in particular, has, like, a very sarcastic, dry sense of humour sometimes. It actually makes me chuckle. Actually, it was it a like bit that. of a laugh. It's tongue in cheek, Danielle. It's tongue in cheek. It's funny. And um, I'm really enjoying it. If I have to like, give one drawback so far, I would say that like, there's obviously been a scene or two that I have not realized the importance of, the gravitas of, because there's certain moments he ends up in new positions of power. And I'm like, how did we get here? <laughs> you know? Like, I think there was like a scene or two that I didn't realize when I was reading it. Oh, holy shit, this means everything's about to change. And thus I was kind of like, when stuff was happening, I was like, how did, how did this, how did this happen? <laughs> how did this happen? So that is, I would say, my one negative so far. And listen, this book is very long, but I don't feel like there's been a lot of unnecessary stuff. I mean, like, it's packing history into it, right? And I just, as a history nerd, I love it. <laughs> I love it. And it's very interesting because there's elements of this that like, you know, the politics of this and the politics of today are not that far apart when you boil them down. On the surface they are. On the surface it's like, I'm gonna... Well, no one's been killed yet really, but you know they're gonna like... I don't know, the way that people are removed from power and that kind of like behind the scenes. But there's a lot of like interpersonal dealings that are very fascinating and I really love the certain female characters that I think are very very interesting and how they're being introduced and I love a cool setting what do you want me to say I'm still loving it I'm still loving it I think I've got a pretty good understanding of there's a lot, there's a lot of characters I, there's moments where I'm like oh who are you but I think they're very minor characters for the main people I think I'm pretty clued up on who they are I'm just really enjoying it guys this is not gonna be for everyone it's not gonna be for everyone. There's like a multitude of reasons I can list why you might not enjoy this. But um, I'm really enjoying I don't know if it's still quite a five star. We'll see, we'll see at the end. It's gonna be somewhere between a four and a five, right? It's gonna be somewhere between that. I can't believe it. This is one of the oldest books on my TBR. There's, there's a video, I'm not sure if I've even privatized it, where like I did a book haul. This was like in my first three videos. It was, my, it was the first video I ever filmed and it's the worst video I've ever made. So please don't go looking for it. Please, please. Please. But I um I called it a book haul, but it was basically all the books I had on my TBR, which at that point was not a lot. I think it was like 30 or 40, um, which then I thought was a lot. Times 10 later. <laughs> but this was on there. Not this edition. I had an older edition that I got rid of when Tom got these editions. But um Wolf Hall was on there. It's one of the oldest books on my TBR. And, you know, of course the thing I'm gonna say is I can't believe it's taken me this long to get to it, but like I can, cause it's very intimidating. I would never probably choose to read this, you know, of my own accord, but I'm loving it. I'm gonna continue the series at some point. It might take me 10 years, <laughs> if I'm completely honest with myself, but I'm really enjoying it. So I'm gonna spend this afternoon finishing it. I hope I'll see you. I have got a movie night tonight, so I don't know if I'll see you tonight. I'll either see you tonight or in the morning with my final thoughts, but I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Hello friends, we've got a nice fire going. I'm getting so hot next to it. Um, but I thought I'd check in with you quickly because I've finally finished Wolf Hall. It only took me 10 years. No, it took me quite a long time. I've probably been reading this for like five, six days. I don't have a ton more thoughts for you. Um, I still really enjoyed it. I'm gonna give it a 4.5 star, much to Tom's outrage. <laughs> He's like, how could you not give it a five star? But um, I do think it's a little long. I think it's a little long. I think we could cut some shit. I don't think, I still think it should be a long book because that is one of the pros of it, but it could be 500 pages rather than 650. I think we could have cut about 150. But um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. Like I said, I think the length is part of its pro, it's part of its pro. It's one of those books where you just get to spend a long time with characters in one setting and really just delve deep into it. And I really enjoyed that. Like I said, I've been saying this recently, I just think I have a thing for books that are <laughs> following either characters from history or um, character, like fictional characters retelling, like Sherlock retelling or whatever. I just love that shit. I love that shit. And like, as someone who loved the Tudors, this was a very fun book to read, especially also having recently had, like I said, Queen Bee by Gina Dawson and loving that and like, my queen Anne Boleyn being like an icon in that book and her being a bitch. She's not nice in this. She's nasty, 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 
evil, evil lady. <laughs> Evil, evil. And um, it's just interesting seeing those different historical takes, you know? I think I've always just consumed pro Anne Boleyn media, you know, <laughs> I refuse to consume anything else. I don't know, it's fascinating. And Thomas Cromwell in this, it's interesting because he's very, it's a very sympathetic portrayal of him. He's very funny. He's quite a caring man, especially to like the, the women and children in his care, especially for the time. And so, I don't know, it's just interesting seeing a portrayal of him. I haven't necessarily consumed a lot of media with him in. So it was interesting seeing that side, but, I really enjoyed this. Would I recommend this to everyone? No. I think you have to like not have an issue with some of the issues I laid out when I first started reading it. I think all those still stand. I think you're gonna be more interested in this if you have some knowledge of the Tudors and what went down. I think otherwise you just really could not give less of a shit. Like I can understand people hating this, you know? It's not for everyone, but I really enjoyed it. I'm gonna continue with the series at some point. And I'd really like to read more that Hilary Mantel's done outside of this. So yeah, 4.5 stars. So Tom, like, is on track to have the highest rated episode of Year of Rex yet. But has he screwed it with Skullduggery Pleasant? Not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. Listen, like you said, I read middle grade. You know, it's a, it's a detective, a skeleton detective. I just think this was like what all the boys read when I was a kid, like all the stinky boys, you know, and I'm not interested. <laughs> but actually I am interested to read something, you know, our other two books have been very intense mentally, uh, you know, very, very intense. I'm excited to read something that's a lot lighter and a lot easier. So I'm hoping to get halfway through tonight. I think this will be a pretty quick read, especially after sitting through the 25 hour audiobook that was this. And I read this pretty slowly on, on, on perfect. Like rather than listening at 1.8 and 2.8 for my non-reading physically and reading physically speeds, which is what I normally listen to audiobooks at, I was listening at 1.5 and 2.5. So I purposely read this a bit slower, but I think we can speed it back up with this. But I, I'm excited, I'm excited. We'll see how it goes. I don't think I'm gonna hate it. I just don't think it's gonna be five stars, you know? But that's fine. That's fine. So I'll check in with you probably in the morning once I'm halfway through and we'll see what we think, but I'm excited to give it a go. Hello friends, good morning. I am halfway through Skullduggery Pleasant. I don't know if I have that many opinions, to be completely honest with you. I don't know if I have any opinions about this book. So we're following these two girlies. One's not a girlie, one's a guy, but they're girlies. One is a young girl whose uncle has just died and she's been like given his house as an inheritance. And this other guy is a skeleton detective who introduces her, he's a friend of her uncle's and he introduces her into this world of magic and sorcery and danger. And it's them on a quest to kind of find out what happened to her uncle and they're trying to find things and whatever. I, I'm reading it. I'm certainly reading it. My word, the words are certainly going to my brain. Are there any opinions in my brain? Not really. Why are the pages so filled with so many words? Like what the fuck? <laughs> Not really. My biggest opinion is that I'm listening to the audiobook and in between like chapter breaks and chapters, sometimes there's this like this jazz music where it's like ta -ta 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 -ta. and then this voice goes, oh yeah. High camp, looking, looking camp in the eye, looking camp in the eye. Um, that's my favorite part so far. <laughs> it's so funny. And then there's like these heels walking away. After, oh yeah, it's like clop, 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 clop. But it's a guy who says, oh yeah. And then women's heels walk away. Anyways, <laughs> it's fine. It's readable. It's not bad. It's not bad. I just don't care. It's not bad. I just don't care. I just don't, I don't really have any opinions. Here's the thing. This is like a 20 book series or something now. And like, I imagine if you were to read this, having read those books and seeing where the characters go, and there's probably loads of little hints that they author is putting in this book that but then become so interesting. And that's probably a great reading experience. But it feels like the opener of a long series. You know, it feels like we're just setting stuff up. This feels like, an, it doesn't feel necessarily like a book in itself. It feels like this is a necessary information for you to meet these characters and meet their situations and meet the world and meet the lore and the magic system and the world building. And it's not necessarily that important on its own, you know, which I feel like often with these long series kids books. I like the character Skullduggery Pleasant is fun. You know, he's a little jazzy. Skull Detective, you know, it's a fun character. It's set in Ireland, which is fun. I'm liking some of the Irish references. But yeah, I, I that's all I can give you if I'm honestly. I don't care. I don't care about this. I'm not gonna remember it. And I, Tom can't even remember it. He just remembers it's a Skull Detective. So we're gonna go on a long walk now and I'm gonna finish this probably in the car ride there and uh, from there and back. And I'll just see you when I'm finished. But it's not like, it's, like I said, it's not bad. 
It's not bad, it's just not great. Hello friends, I certainly just read this. Mm, I just read this. <laughs> I'm giving this a 2.5 because here's the thing. I think this is a very good kids book and I can imagine really enjoying this as a kid and, the, and enjoying the series. My biggest problem with this is it's the first new series. It's the first in a very long series and you can tell that it is just setting up the characters and the plot and the world building and the deeper lore. And I just didn't really enjoy that. I feel like it's a problem I have with a lot of middle, longer middle grade series that I read is that it just, the first book feels quite empty. And there was a lot of fight scenes. There was a lot of fight scenes and they all bled into one. People were always falling off stuff. I'm like, how do we keep falling? Like, how do we keep going down? It's getting weird. So yeah, I found, I found the fight scenes difficult to picture and that always makes me check out of a book when I can't picture what's going on, when I don't, don't have a little film in my brain of what's going on, that makes me check out. So I don't think it's bad, but was it for me? No, it's just not for me. This is a case of it's not for me. I can see if this was a big book in your childhood, like loving it um, and it being very nostalgic, but it wasn't for me. So that gives Tom an average of exactly four stars, which put him on the board second behind me. <laughs> so he's done well, listen. Second, he's done well, but I'm still the winner of Year of Rex. No one can beat me. This is not, I wasn't even planning to do an episode of Year of Rex where it was me picking the books, but I guess it makes sense to do that. But it just seems that I know my reading days the best. Shock horror. But um, I'm hoping that one of our last three episodes, which by the way, two of, I'm gonna have to do them quickly. I'm gonna have to do them soon because we're running out of the year. I know I got behind on Year of Rex. Two of the episodes I was planning on doing are looking a bit iffy. So who knows? I, one's my December, my finale to Year of Rex is dead set. But the other two, are looking a little, I, look, I don't know what we're gonna be doing. Well, I do know what I'd like to do, but either one of them could fall through, or both of them, or none of them, we'll see. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Shout out to Tom for picking what I read and finally making me read Pachinko and Morphal. I knew he would, I know he'd pick those two. Um, he could have had an even higher rating if he just picked something off my TBR cart he thought I'd enjoy it rather than Skullduggery Pleasant. But yeah. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've got lots of very exciting videos coming towards the end of the year. I'm very excited about all the reading I'm going to be doing the next couple weeks. And yeah, I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!